it, everybody. It's that time of the week again, bitch. Welcome to another exciting episode. Is it though? Of old school, new school comedy podcast. And I am your trash talking host, Christy Miller. And with me this week is a good friend of mine. He's up and coming. He's about to blow up. He's great. And it's nice that he'll still talk to me after he becomes all this big shit. And then he'll look down on me as a peasant, like you old raggedy veteran comic who didn't make it. Piece of shit, white girl. <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, this guy, he's got a special coming out soon called I Wish It Was a Joke. He's on his fourth season of Power. He'll be playing the fourth black guy on the left in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there you go. <laughs> I this, love it. This is my I dear friend it. in the whole world. Super funny. I love him. This is Sharif Johnson. You. Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful intro. <laughs> that was very beautiful. I that give was. good intro. Oh, oh that, you do. I give you good do. In, that was I a great one. intro, homie. That was one of the best. That was one of the best <laughs> intros. I want to walk in the house every day. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me excited to come home. Right? <laughs> nah, thank you. Though. Welcome thank to you the front that. door. This guy. <laughs> Welcome to the front door. This guy's amazing. He's going to blow up. Blah, blah, blah. He's, Sh- about, he's about to go in the kitchen and make something to eat. Give it up for Sharif Johnson. I'm in it. <laughs> so corny. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was great. It's not corny. That's uh, cool. I adore you. I think okay. you're so funny and you're just amazing. So, um, and tell- I feel the same too. You're hilarious. Do you yes, I, do. I, do. <laughs> I know you do. You know how it works. If you didn't this. like me, your ass would not be sitting in that Absolutely. chair next to me because I don't fuck around with bullshit. Right, right. I'm too yeah. old for this shit. You know? Yeah, I, I yeah. don't have time. Yeah, yeah. But that's what that's what I love about you. You're so, <laughs> you're so straightforward. You shoot straight from the hip, yep. and you're funny as hell. So Aww. I rock. I love. You. And you're a great person. Aww. It's all the ingredients. You got all the ingredients. Yeah, all the ingredients to fail. <laughs> <laughs> hey oh Hey <laughs> So tell me how, and tell everybody out there, how yeah. long have you been doing stand up now? I've been doing stand up now. This year will be my ninth year. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, about nine years. Uh, and if you really, to be honest with you, we can't really count that pandemic year because nobody was really doing stand up. I was busy during the pandemic. You was busy? Oh Zoom? God. I was headlining three shows a week. Outside? Half hour, no, on Zoom. Okay, I was gonna Half say. Half hour shows. See, I wrote my album on Zoom. Brutally yours on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you stream. Oh, that's it. <laughs> my shameless plug. I'm gonna, do you want to keep it clean too? Well, no, you didn't. I, yeah, I, just, I cl- what? Yeah. <laughs> what am I, Sinbad? <laughs> 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 no, he was so clean his brain died. <laughs> <laughs> Same hey, bad memory. Hey, oh! <laughs> I'm so horrible. You are Sinbad, please. Man. I know we love Sinbad. We love and you know when you roast, yeah, that's that means love. love. That's love. That's Absolutely. love. When I ignore Absolutely. you, it means I do not like exactly. you. Exactly. Exactly. I bad. think Sinbad would appreciate. He that. would. Yeah. I'd have to clean it up though. <laughs> 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 Mr. Star Search. Star Search. <laughs> But, but yeah, I was doing it during the pandemic though. I uh, I did the Zoom shows too. I got booked a lot on them, but I did not like them. I did it, but I could see how you come up with an album because it made you you're you're a hustler. So it made you probably sit down and you had a lot of time to think of all the stuff you had already and kind of put it out there and, and go. You know, I have enough for an album because you definitely did. So I wrote for that you, album in four months. Yeah, for you, but you had. Yeah, but I've saying. had years of material. I've been yes. in this for 190 yes, years. Yes. So you're professional. But the thing is, is that like with Zoom, I was able to cheat because no. all they see is from the chest up, right? Right, right, right. So right, right, right below the the computer was all my notes, and I don't take notes. You know, I'm <laughs> terrible. I have no. I have a set list in mind. I go on stage. Something happens in the crowd. It all goes out the window. Yes, yes. And and I just fly by the seat of my pants. I'm, yes. I'm a master of not having anything ready. Yeah. Or not figure out. I don't want to talk. I don't even know what I want to talk about tonight. And then just go up for 20 minutes and I'm just roast. Same exact way. You know, it's I don't have. You know, it's I have that gift. Thank God. But um, but with Zoom, I was able to like take notes yes. and, and like tweak things and write it down as I was doing it. Right. But also too, you know, I'm a ham. Right. Right. So if there's a light like this yeah. <laughs> and a little red light, if I see one face in a box, I'm on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's do 45, bitch. Yeah, yeah. I will entertain that box. Yeah. Yeah. Just talking. Just talking. Which yeah. again, I I felt the like I said, I got a lot of stuff off, 
but that the reaction, like the crowd reaction and Zoom reaction are two different things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like, it, it almost felt like, I don't know if you, you go live too, right, on, on social media. It felt a little like live, like you're talking, but you're not looking for a reaction when you talk. That's what Zoom felt like for me. When I'm uh -huh. when I'm doing stand up, I want to hear the audience. Like, are they receiving this? Are they do they like that? Did they not like that? Did they understand? You know what I mean? Yeah, I just Zoom. I'm just like, like whatever, man. Yeah, no, but but I go on stage. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, no, I don't. Know, I don't give a shit. But the thing is, for me, that was hard on Zoom was the physicality. Right. Because you know, I get very physical yeah, on yeah, stage. Same, I same, fall down. Same. I jump off things. You know, same. and I'm all over the place. Right. So trying to do that shit, certain jokes I wrote during the pandemic were just, I knew they were throwaways. Right, 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 that right, were, right. They were gonna have about a shelf life of six months to a year. And once we got out of pandemic, I never wanted to talk about it again because yeah. I was done. Me I was too. I was talked out. And when people, it kills me, I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. it, it just wears me out when I hear someone go, you know, in the pandemic, it was like this. Shut up. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're, we're done, done bitch. Even Asian people don't wear masks no more. So, you know. Oh, no, they good. always did. <laughs> I used to wonder yeah, back in the day. Yeah, cleaning your nails. Of course they were. No, yeah. but like, no, because there's 8 million of them on a train. <laughs> they know they're all dirty, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know, so even if you go down Canal Street, even before, like 10 yeah, years yeah, before, yeah. I'd be like, why are they wearing masks? But it's like, because of the allergens in the air yeah. and the pollutants and, yeah. you know, there's 400 million of them in one apartment, you right, know? Right, God right. bless them, you know? And they they don't give a fuck. And, right. they, and it's like, listen to them. They're way ahead of us. Definitely. definitely. They're way ahead of us. Definitely. I mean, they're definitely. TikTok. Those kids are regulated. Yes. They can only watch like educational stuff mm -hmm. like how to play piano or science or math anything that's going to educate them and empower them and build them up to be and then they send uh, the, the bs to america in america we don't have any regulations because no. we're like the jerry springer of country of, right, of right, all of them right. you know yeah jerry yeah. <laughs> jerry, we're, we're watching people prank people and get shot we're, we're watching we're people watching, fall down we're watching somebody run for president who may run for president from jail that can only happen in America. America, yeah, and and who knew? and he'll win because he went to jail. Yeah, and only <laughs> only in America, yeah. which I appreciate. He's the king of losing. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, but people resonate because they're all pieces of shit. Right, right. That's all it right. is. I know. It's I know. like, oh, he's a scumbag like me. Oh, right, like, right. that means it validates their bullshit, so they could keep acting on their bullshit. Right. And it's so funny that who knew America needed a law on the books mm -hmm. to say if you're been indicted 91 times you are not allowed to run for president right, if you right. have a criminal you can't even vote get a you can't even get a job with a criminal record and right. you can, but you can be president, you can be the president though. get the so fuck it's out like, of go here go big or go home you know what i'm, <laughs> I'm about to rob says. i'm gonna rob you all right so oh! don't look everybody <laughs> <laughs> and then run for president oh homie <laughs> you'll win i you'll will rob the votes and me at the same Exactly. I'm gonna oh, because someone always tells me because you know I, I don't talk politics. I don't give a shit. Everybody yeah. do what you got to do. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. You know? I, same. same. I, I just believe love will win. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. And there's more of us than there are of them. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's a good thing that he is doing it again because it's keeping us on our toes. Right. Because right. we get too complacent and comfortable and we let shit slide yeah. and then all of a sudden look what happened. Right. So. Right. Cut to. And my friends and I are like, oh, you should run for mayor of New York. And I'm like, you don't want my ass as mayor. Did, did they really ask you that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Did and you I, now? Did you consider it though? Yes. You did. Oh. And I'm then sorry. I I considered what? it, and I went, yeah, they don't want me because yeah. I will kick out all these dumbass motherfuckers. Ah. You got to be cool. <laughs> you know, a good person. You got to not give a fuck right. about what other people are doing. Mind your fucking business. Let's right. fucking do this. Let's rock it out. Right. Let's empower each other. If you're going to be a dick or crazy or hurt people, you got to go. Yeah. I yeah. will I will ship them to Texas. <laughs> 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 yeah, they don't yeah. want me because I'll, I'll start cussing people out. I will. But you know, that people would love. People will rally behind that because when you think about it, not to. I mean, we, we. It's so funny we're getting into this combo, but just let it flow. I guess whatever. Uh, but but that's why Trump. People rally behind him, not calling you a Trump, but saying like that's his mentality. No, it, I don't the give reason, a damn. Yeah, but the, they ran behind him because they said. 
They just, they didn't care what he stood for. Right. It's just that he was anti-establishment. Right. That's all they care about. They're and, all and fake the anarchists. Yeah. Fake. Yeah, fake and phony. Fake. They are fake. You know, between yeah. them and the woke, I, I want to kill myself. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Like, you get triggered over a word or you go back to your country, speak English. Get the fuck. Both y'all need to go fuck yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> We're all family. We all shit brown and bleed red. And Come at the end now. of the day, Come we leave now. in a box. Yes. And Jesus was black. So and the thing is, <laughs> come on now. Everybody know Jesus was the fourth. Uh, what's the amigo? We all know that. The fourth, the fifth Beatle. The old oh, Beatle and amigo. <laughs> that would be a good uh, collaboration. Right there. The Beatle The Beatle <laughs> <laughs> The Beagles. I want somebody to please mix those together. That would actually be hard. <laughs> Listening to a Beatle mix with the with the Migos would be hilarious. It's been a hard motherfucking day's night, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Yeah. But uh, so back to comedy, enough of the bullshit. And uh, because I don't want to alienate anybody on this show that listens. I don't want anybody to think like, you know, I don't care. You know, if that's what, if that that works for you, then bitch, you just be all the trash you can be. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't affect me. To the fullest. Yeah. To the fullest. Live your life and don't let people dictate. As as long as how you're living is is not affecting anybody negative, I say live what you do. If you don't hurt yourself or others, as long as you you know, let your Free flag fly. Yeah, honey. yeah. If, if you're not, if you're, that's why sometimes people, I, I feel like today's times we're in, especially with social media, people have too many opinions on how other people are living when it has nothing to do with them. Yeah, they're all experts. You ever notice that? Yeah, Facebook, yeah. if you look up the word Facebook in the dictionary, yeah. it says uh, instant expert. Okay, yeah. You yeah, know, exactly. they went to YouTube exactly. University. Those yes. are my favorites. Oh, the YouTube well, I saw YouTube. it on YouTube. Well, bitch, I saw it. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, people have their masters on YouTube yeah. right now. See, Doctorates. we used to joke back in the day when I worked at a gym as a trainer. Right. And you'd see these idiots doing stupid ass shit. We used to say, oh, did you get certified on YouTube? Like, that was a joke. Yeah, and now yeah. it's like, oh, they really did. <laughs> right. Like, ugh. Right. Is, no wonder why everybody's getting killed and hurt. Stupid. Yeah. I can't. Like, yeah. it's just like, you know, just don't worry. Don't worry what I'm doing. Does mm-hmm. it affect you? I, this is my motto. Right. And this is how I live my life. Okay. Does it pay my, if it doesn't pay my bills, if it doesn't put food on my table, yeah. if it doesn't put clothes on my back and it doesn't eat my pussy, it got no power over me. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Right? It makes sense. It's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. for guys, you could say you're dick. Unless, yeah, yeah, Or unless you identify, then you're, you're stick pussy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever, get it, if honey. it doesn't get me off. Yeah. Then it doesn't, yeah. 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 If I'm it doesn't make you nut, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't make me nut, I won't go nuts. Yeah. That's how it goes. If it doesn't make me nut, then I will work on my hoe strut. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> my hoe strut. The hoe strut. That's just a catwalk. That's what it is. Exactly. The <laughs> Cat Williams walk. <laughs> let me tell you something, motherfucker. <laughs> no, um, Cat Williams, man. Uh, so I, let me ask you. You watched okay. the interview? Uh, hello. Yo, Danny. Cat's one of my favorite people. I love Cat Williams. I love him, man. I knew when he started rubbing his leg. That's when you know a motherfucker's channeling right, shit. Because right. I do the same thing. And he started rubbing his legs. I'm like, oh, he's channeling. Do you, he's channeling. You, do you remember being in high school? I, I remember when high school fights would break out and stuff like that. You could tell the body language of people. Yeah. Who were gonna fight. He came up there ready yep. to verbally yeah, fight. Yeah, he, he, see, he did. He was ready. See, Cat Williams did, Shannon like Sharp. I always say. <laughs> Yeah, Kat, Shannon Sharp needs to suck Cat's dick. Yeah, to yeah, how, how you doing today, Cat? <laughs> Cat Williams. Yo, sk- yo, Cat. I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Not lying. Yo, oh no! I'm just kidding. Earthquake probably somewhere was like, damn, Cat, why'd you cry? No, the earthquake's on comedy hype right now. Man, fuck Cat Williams. Him and Corey Holcomb can go jerk off on themselves. They're both, both hilarious. Know, they're both, and I love them both. Yeah, I was about to say both hilarious comedians. But it, it, I think everybody's fantastic, and everybody's a lid for every everybody's comedy, you fantastic. Know? And the fact that no, uh, anyway, <laughs> not everybody. But, everybody, everything. Listen, this is the world. Everything can't be good. Yeah, Every, it's, it's, it's and also comedy is also you know subjective. Right, so, right. But for but for cat, cat broke the internet. Cat ruined it for everybody else to out people. Right. Because it's done. You can't. I see people trying to pull stunts. Yeah, I see it. And too. stuff like that. Love Norman. And, you know. <laughs> but, that's, but it's, but you know, it's But it's corny. not going to work it's anymore corny. because we it's all corny. see right through it. Yeah, it's corny. And it's like, you get, just just do, if you're funny, just be funny. Nobody right. cares. Right. Be funny. Right. They're going to talk about you. Cat had nothing to promote. Right. 
all cat does no, is well, sell tour, out tours. I was about to say, well, he had he his doesn't tour. need, he, but he, he doesn't need to. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp needed him. Oh, for sure. Okay. I agree. Cat Williams put Shannon Sharp on the map as a podcaster. I agree. Because Shannon Sharp, yo, Skip, listen, Skip, <laughs> you know, yelling at Skip Bayless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Skip, <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys suck. I hate the Ravens because they cut me, so fuck Lamar Jackson. Skip, you know. Yeah. First of all, you're a grown ass man. Don't be going, Skip. <laughs> skip is one syllable, not 18. Yeah. Skip. <laughs> I love, Do I you like watch... this song? No. Skip. Skip this song. <laughs> oh, shut up. But, you know, he put him on the map. Now he's got millions of followers. Good for him. You know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know what? Who, everybody he was, won. He was, he was doing pretty well, though. He was doing that. good, but, but, but this, it did catapult. I mean, I had a guest no on here a couple weeks ago. But yeah. We'll be here all week. <laughs> So uh, I had a couple weeks ago, a friend of mine, she's in Springfield, Mass. We did a virtual uh, podcast. You know, I had her virtually on the show, Jess Miller. Okay. And when I told her, I so said, we're going to talk about Chappelle's special, The Dreamer, and right. Cat Williams' interview mm -hmm. on uh, Club Shay Shay. And she's like, I never heard it. I, she goes, I, I go, you know, Shannon Sharp. And she goes, Shannon Sharp? Mm. You know, she's a 50 year old lesbian. Okay. You know, okay. mountain lesbian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So with she the flannels. Yeah. She, she mm. goes, Shannon Sharp, the football player? Mm. And and I said, yeah. She goes, he's got a podcast? I said, oh, girl, you're way behind. Yeah. But yeah. she never watched Cat Williams either. What? So and I it, turned her on. She's never turned. No, and now she's obsessed with him. She goes, wow. thank you for opening my eyes. Wow. I love, I go, I know. He's a, he's phenomenal. He's, phenomenal. he's electric. Yeah. He, yeah. he commands a room. Yeah. He's, he picked up where Chris Tucker thought he was going to go right. with his voice and right. his cadence right. and his personality. Right. right. But Chris didn't pay it off. He hit movies big, which was great. Right. You know, and I love Chris Tucker. I, th I think Chris, I think what happened with Chris was uh, he just took the, what was, the, I guess, the godly Christian route. Because yeah. he felt like he didn't want to be the poster of a lot of bad things. He didn't so want he, to be the guy that smoked weed in right, the movie. Right, He tried to clean it in the up. Hood, right? And it's and God bless him doing yeah, the MC yeah, Hammer yeah, route, yeah, but yeah. it gets you broke. It does. I'm sorry, because people don't like, pe people are scumbags. They right. don't want nice. Yeah. They okay. don't want happy. They don't want positive. They like angry, bitter. So, and plus with black people. The, the only clean people, mm. like clean, clean, squeaky clean images who make money are the pastors. Everybody else. Because they're scamming everybody. Right. They're the they're... dirtiest motherfuckers. Are <laughs> you T.D. Jakes in the Diddy parties. No. Oh, God. <laughs> T.D. Jakes is taking all of them damn bitches. <laughs> T.D. Jakes. Yeah. What all? All those guys are scumbags. Yeah, Anybody yeah. with power and has that kind of power and influence over communities is a scumbag nine times out of ten. Mm. You know, because it goes to their head. Mm. When you're being yes all the time, constantly people are kissing your ass, telling you what you want to hear, you start to like enjoy the smell of your own farts. Yeah. yeah. If you're not a strong enough that person in your skin, mm -hmm. if you don't know who the fuck you are already, mm -hmm. it's going to destroy you. That's why you see all these guys crash because right. it eats them alive. They right. don't know what's real and what's fake. Mm -hmm. Like who, they don't trust people. They get paranoid. For like, sure. because sure. are you being friends with me? Cause you think I'm going to do something for yeah, you? And yeah. it's like, it makes sense. That makes you know, sense. And, it, and it's, and it's sad because you watch good people get destroyed and but it's just, they didn't have a good sense of self and they surrounded and themselves with people that they thought that was it right there ding mm -hmm. ding ding you mm -hmm. got to surround yourself with people yeah. that's that to me and, and, is the most important yeah. part of your team yeah because, because we're, we're you got to know who you are first right. because right. if you really know who the fuck you are yeah. you're not going to surround yourself with bullshit yeah I agree. it's it's gonna you're gonna weed it out right away and then you're going to be protected right but if you don't have a good sense of self and you start buying into the bullshit that right. people are slinging and kissing your ass because yeah. they want to use you because they know they can make money off of you right they're going to eat you alive because they don't care about you they care about how much money they can make when they use that up they throw it away and find the next guy 100%. so it's 100%. it's it's a brutal industry mm -hmm. and so i know i and i didn't play the game and i still don't and that's why i get ostracized and yeah. mooney always warned me back in the day the opening for paul mooney yeah, the great ball. i got off stage one night at caroline's and i've mentioned this before on the podcast and he used to stand in the back of the room every night and watch me right. every night like a proud papa right. and he i got off stage and just ripped the place apart and I get off stage and I look at him for approval. Like, was that okay? You yeah, know, because yeah, he's, you know, course, I look up course. to him. That's he's, your mentor. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. the greatest. And right. he looked at me. He goes, "Honey, they're going to want to lynch you." And I said, <laughs> "What?" And he goes, "Honey, you have a freedom on that stage that they don't have, and they're going to kill you for it." And wow. he was right. Wow! Wow! God because white him. women 
aren't supposed to talk like this. Right, right. And I mentioned this last week. And so that's why I've always gravitated towards because with the black community, you don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah, you, we it, don't care. You just, it, you're like, oh, this bitch is crazy. She's right. funny. Right. And then you accept me automatically. Right. When it comes to like my community, they, they're like this, like you're different and they'll cross their arms it, it's and gotta, block. It's gotta be okay yeah. first. And yeah. Like, and that's what I've noticed. Because they gotta get permission right. to like something different. So, so it's funny for me, that. yeah, for me, okay. I have to ease myself into the white communities. Okay. Ease my personality. Yes. With black people, I just walk in like a nut job and like just be myself. Yeah, and like, free. We love her. And like, oh, this bitch is crazy. Yeah, we yeah. live for Who this. Is? Who this? <laughs> yeah. man? Be cool this bitch hell. is cool as hell. She coming to the cookout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, know? right, right. Back. So it's, but that's just my reality. And now I said if I was fat or if I was black, they wouldn't, they would not even feel a threat from me at all. Right, right, right. So it's just, you know, I was raised under Paul Mooney. I was, I was, you know, That's born, right. I was birthed by Mitzi Shore. Yeah. So right. at the comedy store. So I was taught by two strong individuals yeah. to be a powerful female. Right, right. And so, and that really, you know, when I left, when Paul Mooney and I split ways, when he started getting really sick and all the vultures around him right. pushed me out and, right. and they really, banned me from him and it was wow. really it was a very traumatic a yeah it, it broke like i never felt a broken heart before until yeah. that because yeah. it's like my dad right. you know you just right. took my family away because yeah, you're yeah. a greedy son of a bitch absolutely, absolutely. so um i saw the when i, I saw would, paul mooney right before he passed at um the, they had the lol awards uh-huh yes i remember and uh this is so funny i, I don't know wh who was with him but he looked very miserable right mm -hmm. i remember this and my, my wife was with me so we, I took it to the, we went there or whatever, and um, he was at the table like right across, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember like looking like, oh, that's Paul. I was telling my wife, like, that's Paul Mooney. She was like, I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you married her. Right, right. If and you know she, Paul Mooney, know, you're right. in. You're that's in. true. And he was like, I'll never forget. He was like, this. Just looked like, you know, out of yeah. And the, com you know, as comedians, mm -hmm. We always love to make people smile. That's mm -hmm. just in us. Yeah. And I looked at him and I just started doing like this funny thing and he started laughing, right? Aww. He did. That was like, like, and to me, it, it was like, because he looked out of it, right? He just was. being honest. He looked he was. out of it. He looked, he, was. he looked miserable and out of it, right? But for like, it felt like, for like maybe that 30 seconds, whatever he smiled, mm -hmm. felt like he came back for a little. Yeah. And, and he just smiled or whatever. And then he like did this or whatever. And, that way, and I was like, Yeah, I'm like Paul Smoothie, Paul Smoothie, <laughs> Paul Mooney, smile. Like, you Shannon Sharp now, <laughs> Paul Smoothie, Paul Smoothie, Paul Yo, Skip, Smoothie. Yo, Skip, you don't know about the Paul Skip Mooney. what I said about Paul Smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, do you remember what the this is gonna be so shady and catty? Do you remember who the, what the lady looked like he was sitting I don't, with? I, don't. I just remember how he looked, I, yeah. you know. Because they're all Mooney. nondescript. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Paul, he looked he looked out of it a little and they were, you know, he looked they were they were like kind of helping um, him. Helping him, yeah. gesturing him and stuff yeah, like that. And yeah. he, he went up, he gave a speech too though. So he was like in and out of it at that yeah. time. He was a little in and out of it. Because mm -hmm. he gave a speech and he was saying on how with comedy, he was just saying, like, basically be bold. And then he kind of went out of it a little bit. He said something else and I forgot the whole speech. But the meaning to so the did speech he. was, yeah. <laughs> but the meaning was like, yeah, do your, do your stuff. Man. He would always Go tell on. you, do you. Yeah. He told me stuff. when I started, he goes, honey, I don't, you know, the only way you're going to find it is getting on that stage right. every night. Right, right. It, there's no class. There's nobody can tell yeah, you how me. to be you. What, what, what would you, what would you consider two things if you can? What's the two best pieces of advice Paul Moon gave you? Be myself, be fearless. And don't take shit from anybody. Don't don't let other people dictate how I am on stage. I love that. I love that. Because people used to. Yeah. You should wear a dress on stage, Christy. That would soften it. You know, you maybe you shouldn't curse so much. Maybe maybe you shouldn't talk about those things. Maybe you should talk about like a relationship or right, right. so I wrote a bit about it. Yeah. And it might it was a broadzilla bit. Right, and this right. is like twenty years ago. And I said and uh lights oh god this lights went out when you don't make see so this is Christy the ghost of right damn i gotta I, plug I, in the next door <laughs> i'll let you know that right now my mother one time we was just talking and it happened just like that right and uh all right we're gonna take a break we'll be right back with some light in this bitch it's paul mooney burnt it out by the way yeah yeah he said stop talking about me
And we are back. <laughs> pay my telephone bill, pay my light ring bill. light bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we could chill. I don't think you are. Right. <laughs> okay, he on say. <laughs> ah, he on say. That's hilarious. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just just don't let people dictate who you are. Because yeah. no one can tell you how to be you, and that's right. what he would tell me. No one can tell you how to be you. Right. You know, either you got it or you don't, and you'll find the funny up there on that stage. And then I he would tell me one night, you know, in my beginning years, uh, homie, it doesn't matter if there's one person or a thousand people. Do your show, homie. Mm. And mm. he's right. Mm. And it don't matter. Like right. at late nights at the comedy store would be really like, these poor people have been beaten up for six hours or right. five hours or whatever it was. And you're the last one on in the Kinnison spot and everybody's blown the time. And right. you're supposed right. to go on at 12, but it's really like 1.15 in the morning. And yeah. And there's that two people in the front row. You'd the best believe I gave these motherfuckers a show. Yeah. You yeah, know, and yeah. he always told me, doesn't matter. And that's, I think, too, because I was raised like that, even cut to back to the, referring back to the pandemic. Right. It didn't matter because I was raised that way. Right. Doesn't right. matter where, do your shit. Right. Give them a show. And that's why I headline so many shows because I was just giving them, like, a, I did a podcast with my buddies Jim Madrinos and John G. And Jim Madrinos has been in the game 40 years and he came up under Kinnison. Mm -hmm. And this guy's a monster storyteller. He was a big writer in LA in the 90s and early 2000s and all this stuff on a lot of TV shows. And uh, he, had the, he had me on the show once and he said, I just have to ask you, how the hell do you maintain that same energy on Zoom as you do on that stage, I go, because that's how I was raised. Do yeah. your fucking show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It don't matter. Yeah, go hard. You, if you're if you're a real performer, you'll do it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the ones that cowered behind it, then they're, they, I question them. Right, right. Like, oh, you're spoiled rotten. Like my favorite. I know you see this because, you know, the clubs we play. Yeah. There's always like there be nights where there be two or three people in the audience, yeah. maybe five tops, right, right. and they're not sitting by each other. They're scattered, and the empty chair. I call it empty chair yes. syndrome. Yes. Comics get empty chair syndrome and right. they start downplaying the room. Oh, I could have done this from the right. living room. Right. I could have emailed the set in, you know, right. or whatever right. their right. fucking joke is. Right. And one night. But, but you know what? I've learned um, some comedians, that's their way of addressing the elephant in the room. And they try to, like, to the audience, they try to, uh, I guess, let them know, like, look, I, I see you. I know what this no, is. No, that's not, that's not how it comes nah, off. No, that's know, a, it's a rookie mistake. Yeah, I know. It's I know. a total rookie know, move exactly. because you just play, to, your, the, just play to the just tables that are there. I, yeah. So one night I was at a club and there was literally four people. It was a group of four that came in and they were towards the back, like the second row from the back row. Right. And the comics were just shitting on the room, shitting on the show. And you know, for an audience member, they don't want to sit here and listen to your negativity and right. how bad this club is or Especially how bad the pay. show. Yeah, they, they pay, pay 20 bucks a head yeah, and yeah. two drink minimum. Right. And you're telling them this is a shitty night. You're like, yo, you now, wasted your money. Yeah, now they feel <laughs> stupid <laughs> or, you know. Me. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. So I went on, I was closing the show and I went up and I cussed all the fucking comics out. You know, I read them for filth. Right. I destroy the, the t table screaming, laughing. The staff is laughing. Right. And I did 20 minutes for these people, like wow. hardcore, and mm. gave them a fucking show. As and, you should, though. And they were so grateful. And, mm -hmm. and like, it's like, stop playing to the empty tables. Right. It's, they're empty. Mm -hmm. Your name obviously was, and I said this, I go, well, you think you're such a badass comedian. How come your name on the marquee didn't draw shit? Right. You couldn't even draw a bath, let right. alone a crowd, bitch. So shut the fuck up. That's Don't blame. Fact. You know, you ain't shit. Is your name Kevin Hart? Right. Is your name Chris Rock? Is your name Dave Chappelle? No. Then Is your name Sharif Johnson? No. Okay, that, maybe not. It might have been. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So you play to the tables that love you. Right. I, I played to two people and just gave them a show. I just focused on that. I used to watch Mooney late nights at the comedy store when I was starting out. And there'd be one or two people left and he would just sit there and just look at them and have convert and his act was like a conversation. Right. And, and he's right. like making it personal, but he's telling, he's doing all his acting. But he's doing his jokes. He's doing his jokes yes. and giving them a show and they're yes. loving it. And 
it's so great and those, it's like those shows build you for that yes and yes, it, it builds character it, it puts hair on character. your chest yeah yeah and it, it it really gets you ready gets you you know strapped and ready to go hit the mm -hmm. fucking world mm -hmm. so if you can handle an empty room you can handle a full fucking theater I, I agree a thousand percent and the thing is a lot of these people when i watch them cave in an empty room i'm like you're not ready right you're, you're not built for this yeah yeah. So go figure it out and then come back because you ain't shit. One, one so don't best. shit on the venue. Right. Don't shit on the people that paid to come in. Mm -hmm. And don't shit on the other comics that, that didn't also draw. Because you're I all agree. in the same boat. You're right. all bitches. One of, one of the best pieces of advice I got in comedy mm. was from a comedian. He said, uh, you know, get comfortable with the silence. Yes. It makes you better. And I remember when he first said that, I was like, be comfortable. Like, yeah. Ain't we here? For this is when I first started. I was right, probably like yeah. <laughs> three days in. Right. And I'm like, you want me to not make people laugh? No, 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 no. no. But I understand it it's, now. It's, it's about pacing. Right, right. It's about just being, being a, yeah, if you're comfortable, comfortable on stage, mm -hmm. you know, and that was one thing like, you know, before the pandemic, I started opening for Dice again because I re right. reconnected. So in bigger Shout venues. Dice. <laughs> If you guys don't know, he just jerked the air off and then splattered it like Spider-Man on the table. That was C-Lo. <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. Your mama knows dominoes. <laughs> so, um... You know, when you're doing bigger theaters, because the sound of, you know, the the speed right. of sound. Right, right. Like in clubs, it's a lot faster paced because yes. of the acoustic, it's a smaller room and it bounces back, the laughs bounce back faster yes. because yes. the sound doesn't have as far to travel. Mm -hmm. So then you go to theaters and you got to pause, you got to pace. You can't race through because the, the joke is going out and then it's coming back in right. on a wave. Like it's a like, wave. like time, like, the ocean. like people, if you don't know how to pace yourself, go to the ocean, go to the beach and then do a joke as the wave goes out and then wait for the wave to come back. And then once the wave starts to go out again, do another joke right, right, and right. that'll help pace you. That's the way I describe it. Right. So that's awesome. Yeah. So I've never, by the way, I've never, I haven't done, well, only like a small, mm -hmm. I did one. Yeah. Small theater, but I've done, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. Right. It's the bigger the venue, the slower you have to yeah, pace yourself. Right. Yeah. So, um, then when the pandemic hit and the park shows, you really had to wait. Right. Because you right. couldn't hear it because there was no walls to bounce it off of. It was so weird doing outside shows because yeah. you would be doing jokes and, and you'd see people laughing. But you couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear it. Yeah. And then I, I remember the first show I did in the pandemic. I got off the show and I like I felt like I bombed. Yeah. Right? I was like, dang, man. Like I got off, but people were coming up to me like, oh, you're so funny. And yeah. I was like, that was weird. And everybody got off stage and said the same thing. Yeah, I was it's, like, oh, they. You know, they yeah, hear me, I just don't hear them. Yeah, and they're way in the back on blankets because they're separating and they're... Oh, see, I told you, you move around too goddamn much. Try the pole. Motherfuckers. <laughs> this stupid lavalier. I'm going to put it up here on the hood. Put it up here. In the hood. On the hood. <laughs> Yo, that's put right. On the hood. That's right. On that's how I hood. roll, bitch. You know, that's how I roll. <laughs> and when I put it on the hood, you know it's good. You know that's the only hood you've ever been in? Which one? The sweatshirt. <laughs> Rich hoods, poor hoods. Right? The day hood. <laughs> but, they hood. But, um, but yeah, so the pacing of that was crazy, but yeah. I was so grateful to be like, you know, back in theaters again and getting my feet wet again after just playing small clubs all right, the time. Right, right. So it actually prepared me for the pandemic because I got to relax. Yeah. And on Zoom, you got to pace because of the delay. Yes. So it really helped me pace. And I would try to, and I would tell comics, just let the laughs come back. Let, don't, don't panic in the silence. Yeah. Just yeah. let it happen. Yeah. Let it sink. Sometimes things are a slow burn. But that's that that comes with knowing you're funny. Because mm -hmm. when you know you're funny, you're not looking for validation. Like, yeah, yeah, that's also seasoned. You know, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. you know but, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like ten thousand hours makes you an expert. Yes. You know, I'm pushing yes. I'm twenty eight years in, so yes. I'm pushing thirty thousand hours. Yes. So it's like three times. Right. Come so on. right. <laughs> three times three mom. Three times mom. <laughs> I circle back three times. <laughs> so uh boop, boop, boop. Exactly. <laughs> <So stupid. laughs> but it's but it's true. But uh, but I've watched you grow these last few years, and it's just really fun to watch. You Thank really, you. it's really fun to see. You know, it like seeing young jacks. I have a lot of young. You know, when I say young jacks or uh -huh. new jacks, yeah. it's not about age. It's about comedy age. Yes. Yes. So like you know, when I see new jacks that really 
like they've got it. Yeah. I like to celebrate it yeah, because there's so many shit bags because of the pandemic. Everybody right. went on Zoom and decided, I'm a comic. Mm -hmm. You're a cunt. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> fuck you. And everyone that looks like you, fuck your computer, fuck your iPad, fuck your ring light, hey, fuck yo. the lipstick you put on hey, for the yo. ring light. Fuck, fuck, fuck your, your charger. Fuck yeah. everything. Fuck, the charger. The fuck, your, fuck your con <laughs> <Ed> bill. <laughs> fuck CVS where you bought your cheap ass <laughs> lipstick, bitch. Fuck your fake eyelashes. That's right. Fuck all that shit. Yeah. Fuck your Soap you used to wash your ass. Yeah. Go fuck you. you know? <laughs> Everything you stand for. Right, bitch. <laughs> fuck your chair. <laughs> fuck your floor. <laughs> fuck your mama's mama. Fuck it. Right. Great grandmothers is good. Fuck it. your family tree. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it's in a forest fire. You know? <laughs> and fuck your pets too. Right. <laughs> no, right. I love the pets. No, no, fuck the them. They're, if they belong to you, when they leave the house, we love them. But when they're in the house with you. No, if they get to come over, I steal them. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so you're a pet lover? Oh yeah. What do you have pets? Not right now. Okay, so you're a former pet lover. No, I'm a pet lover. I just oh, love I everybody love. else's pets. I love you I'm like a, the auntie. Yeah, of pets. I'm total auntie. <laughs> I have a sweatshirt that says, um, I must pet all the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I use social media for the dogs. Yeah. Like that's it. Like, yeah. you know. Animal videos and people falling down are my favorite things yeah, me to too. watch. It's my, so my funny. My first video viral was uh, of my dog. I have a pit bull. I Rudolph. know. I love your baby. I love, I her. love, her. love her. I'm obsessed with this pit bull. I Yo, love her. I love this dog. Her name's Misty Blue Johnson. She was a Johnson before my wife. Turn That's my whole world, <laughs> Misty Blue. You didn't think That's I knew cool. Dorothy hey, Moore, did you? Hey, hey, hey. Hey. What? What? <laughs> not, but I'm, I'm not an surprised. old ass sister. I'm not surprised. No, I'm not. If no. it was somebody else, I would have said yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, hey, like, no, no, this bitch. <laughs> yeah, but she yeah. knows more black music than black people. <laughs> no, no, you do. <laughs> I, I can promise that. I can name a few of them who don't know any. <laughs> You know, you see him. You see him. We see these comedians. You know, Teddy Smith. My yeah. best, he's my yeah. best friend. Teddy. We talk for hours on the phone. And like he'll, he'll like throw a song out and I'll start singing it. He goes, I knew your black ass would know this. <laughs> and we're laughing. So one time he threw a song out. I'm like, I don't know that. And he went, uh-huh. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you're good. When black people are trying to trick you about black music. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Because we do that with each other. He, That's how you yeah. know you're here. <laughs> Cause we do that with each other. <laughs> Whenever we do that with movies and music, we'll yep. be like, "Where's that from?" We try to catch each other yep. off. Yeah. Like, ah, so somebody's trying to pull your black card. Yeah. Yeah. You're. Oh, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's you're so in. funny. Yeah. yeah. Don't try it. <laughs> yeah. But my dog, man, that was my. Oh, that's the first so video, beautiful. Misty Blue, man. Uh, it's a video. It was just, and it was simple too. She just was licking me, like she kept licking Aww. me nonstop, showing me love, and I was like, "This is how you tell your dog." like to stop, so I went and her face freaked out because she never <laughs> she never heard me She's bark like, at her. She said and then she just like her eyes did like that and she like walked off slow. Video did like two million views. Aww. And that was the first one that went viral for me and over the Aww. door. Yeah, 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 that's my dog. I love I love her. I had I put Got one it during video the pandemic. Up. Yeah. Too, so we spent yeah. a lot of time. A lot of time together. A lot of time together. I had one video go viral on Instagram just a couple months ago and somebody reported it and took it down. What? And it There's got, a lot of haters. Right out before there. it hit eighty thousand views in like twenty minutes. Like, like my phone was blown like I didn't even think about it because yeah, yeah, my yeah. shit don't go viral because right, right. I put out content. Right, right, I don't, right. you know, and I'm yeah. not, I'm 53. Like I have time to make videos. I got, I got, <laughs> I got shit to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's bad, you know, and. I got a life. Yeah, hello. And, uh, and it was blown and then it got reported and taken down and I was so mad. Wow. And it was uh, my friend, Anthony, Miss, Miss Anthony girl, <laughs> um, was at the 53rd and 7th Avenue train stop, the okay. BDE. Yeah. And he's going to work. He, he lives in our neighbor in Hell's Kitchen with me. And okay. he, he works out in Queens. And he's at the, the train stop. And he's like, oh my God. And he pans up and it's a guy on his phone in the in the little, you know, the poles there have those little things that stick out yes. so you can kind of hide. Yes. He had gray sweatpants on and homie was jerking himself out watching porn on his what? phone. What? So it, nothing was showing. <laughs> It was okay. all under the sweats right, and, and right. my brother had in. the phone and he when was going, going in, in and he's yanking and he's cranking and Anthony yeah. sends it to me and I'm like, bitch, I'm posting this. This is too good. This is the epitome of New York. And it, it went it viral. Is. 
now, on now, Instagram and got fucking reported like a half hour later. Let me later. ask you, now what's funny to me, the background, how many people were watching and how many people were just like, oh, it's a normal day in New York. That's what I said, I go, okay, and I go, Anthony, where's the scary part? Yeah, no, nobody cared probably. No. There's probably somebody who walked by like, good video. Yeah, I, I just walk by him and go, oh, oh yeah. I, yeah, I jerked off to that. Yeah, even the rats will leave you alone. They're like, you know what? Go listen, ahead the rats are like, listen, I'm trying to find a Lucy, bitch. I ain't trying to fucking watch you jerk it. You got, go you ahead, got a, bro. you got some food. You yeah, want to drop something down there. You got a slice of pie. Yeah, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, you yeah. Gotta, do your thing. Yeah, throw that cheese pie down here and let you have your free hand. Yeah. <laughs> going ham on the train is crazy though. Yeah, crazy. Going, crazy. he was going ham on that day. <laughs> I bet he was. Yeah, I, he was, I, yeah, he was hamming out, baby. It was wow, great. Wow, that but that's was, New York. Today. Yeah, and Plymouth. that's and that's what I love about this city. Yeah. Is how you know I always tell people don't pay money to go to Broadway. Right. Just ride the train or walk around. Yeah, there's plenty of nut jobs out there. I remember during the pandemic because I live in Hell's Kitchen, so right. I'm walking towards Ninth, and there was this homeless dude by the corner where the Keels is. Right, and he pulls his dick out, and he's looking at it. And he's pointing, he's like, you blah, 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 and he's cussing at his dick and yeah, pointing. That's funny. And then he turns around and he pees. So he must have been yelling, you better pee he, or we're out of here. He sounded like me when after I, after I had my son in high school, I was just cursing my dick out. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? <laughs> you should have got out of there. Dog. What the fuck is wrong with you? You should have pulled out. You should have pulled you out. Can't you can't stay into the end. White know. people stay to the end. You Black know, people can't. run first, then ask you questions. Know. Hello. You know. <laughs> Black people go out first in the scary movies. Get yep. out of there. Or they run and then they figure out why are we running? Oh, there was something bad. Oh, okay. Good oh, no, looking yeah, out. We Good don't looking quite, out. If we see, I'm telling you right now. If I, I this is how black <laughs> people. If I see animals run, I run. Yeah. If I see them, I'm like, where they, running? where they going? I want to. Yeah. I remember we went to the beach this summer and uh, my wife. We was there and she was like, come on, get in the water. I didn't get in the water because all the birds, they were sitting on like the, uh, yeah. on the sand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if the birds aren't getting in the water, neither am I. That's the type of sense I have as a black guy, where it's like if if they if the birds are this is what they do they send water. No, they're just they were on break. No hell no. They were on break. Hell no. They're like bitch, we got 20 minutes left on our break and we got to clock back in and go dive. Like nigga, don't do it. No, there is a shark out. There's a white shark, great white. Not getting in. It's a great white. Yeah. It's a great white homie. They don't call them great black sharks homie for a reason. on land too. Like everything we used to do back in the day at the comedy store, we used to do everything as Mooney, mm -hmm. a, a great white, there's nothing great about white, homie. They should call it the great big black shark. Oh, 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 oh killing white folks. <laughs> you know, it's just, everything yeah. was a Mooney bit, but yeah. um, I love you to death. No, and I'm so you happy too. you were here. Thank and, you for having me too. And uh, I always wrap up the show. Dang, that was fast. I know. How much time was it? How much time did we we're, we're behind, we're at 43 minutes. What? We usually, we usually wrap up around 40 and then do the closing arguments. That's awesome. <laughs> we had a good time. Oh, always. Yeah. That means we have, it means it's fun. And that's, I that's what I love about this show. It's just talking shop and telling stories. But um, these are my two questions I like to ask people yes. because they're, it's silly and, and fun and it's hilarious. Yeah. So my first question is, is there a bit a comic has done that made you go, damn, I wish I had written that. That's brilliant. So yeah, there's one. Uh, the Dave Chappelle bit he did about Bill Cosby. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> when he said, like, <laughs> he told the whole like history of everything and then yep. he goes, during that whole course of time, Bill Cosby raped, da 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 women. <laughs> I thought, it, I love that bit, I'm sorry. I loved it. I was like, yo, he's a goat. Yep. He's a goat for that. That shit was. was so good. It was good. It was a good bit. It really was. That that was probably the one bit I went, wow, he went there and that was brilliant how he pulled it all together. You know, like yep. it was like a, a Houdini trick with, with comedy. Oh, I thought that was brilliant. He's really great about callbacks and sneaking them in, not just generically doing a callback. Right. But all of a sudden, without you even knowing it, he'll just slide it in yeah. and just destroy he's right. a master yeah he is he he's is. a master he's a master and, yes. and uh fuck you Corey holcomb for saying he bombs every time he goes on stage Corey, Corey i Corey, love you Corey, let me calm tell down you, Corey holcomb is, is brilliant too dude he's he's, he's amazing and he's so funny and I, I love watching him he's brilliant um i just think that sometimes he gets angry 
because he's like because he hasn't crossed over does the world know how yet yeah, they do the thing is though the world does know how brilliant he is he just doesn't have the the machine that other guys have maybe. well he hasn't well he hasn't crossed but over he's brilliant it's like dude everybody knows my thing is you own the quote unquote chitlin circuit right you make a lot of money you yes, make a fancy does. fucking living dude you're funny you get paid to do what you love in theaters right be proud right like i meet cruise ship comics like friends of mine that do cruise ships and they get mad because they don't get 50 dollars spots right and i'm like who cares there's 800 of us fighting for 50 bucks you're getting 2500 for two days of work but the thing about the cruise ship comedians it's a great gig it pays i've a done lot. it it's, it's horrible. A, yeah, it's a, it's a great, like, financially, though. Yeah. You can stay but stable, to, but you stay stuck on sea. Yeah, but the thing so is, but a lot you do, land. you miss you miss the miss land life, but at the yeah. same time, you're getting paid to do what you love. Now that, now listen, I Be agree. Be careful what you wish for. I agree. You just might get it. That part. That's a yep. bar. That's, that's a, a bar. That's right. So you wish to get paid a lot of money to do what you love? Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. You should have been more specific. Yeah. And yeah. on that note, as a comic, as I'm an old head, so we love stupid street jokes. Yeah. We like to crack each other up. And Mooney used to close his shows with street jokes, and yeah. he would mooney them. And right. that's when you knew he was wrapping up. Right. So what is your go-to street joke? So, you know, it's funny. I, I didn't read that. Dang. I don't have a go-to street joke. I'll tell you this, man. I'll tell you what I found funny. Okay. And I don't know if it's a street joke, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to say it. Uh, this guy Charleston. You ever heard of Charleston White? Oh, we love Charleston White. Charleston White, <laughs> he's, man. A, he's a hot mess. Hey, and yo, I love Charleston him. White is I'm a always lunatic. There for him. I'm, I'm there for him. He'd be like, him. I'm telling y'all, motherfuckers. I don't know. <laughs> I love y'all. He made me laugh, man. It's he's, the character. Now, not a great comedian, right? No, but a he's great a character. comedian, but he's a great, great character. He's, yeah. He's, One of the best podcast characters ever yeah, created. My thing is, you Charleston know what I call White. him? You know what I call Charleston White? Cat Williams off of Wish. And on that <laughs> note, <laughs> and but on he, that note, he has a great. He had a great joke because you know he's he's like a you know he starts a lot of stuff right, oh, yeah. and he gets it. He always talks like he's ready to fight, and he's like this uh -huh. little. He's probably the size of this mic, right? Yep. But he's ready to fight. He's ready for war all the time with that one glass eye. And he was saying how um, he's black, he, Sandy he Duncan. Was, <laughs> but but every time he gets into like people confrontations, oh yeah, people he'll always like mace people. He'll do like these these he'll he'll throw chairs. He doesn't fight fair. No. And he was telling them he was like because uh, there was a guy saying like Cam Newton when he was on the podcast with him, and he was like he was like you know Cam's all macho and he's like man I would beat you. He's like, you won't beat me. He said, the problem is I'm not a prize fighter. I'm a surprise fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that, I'm oh, sorry. That, that's that's like, great. That thing tickled He's... me. And I just, I just subscribed. That's probably one of my favorite street. I guess that that's, that's cause that's like a street dad joke to me. Like I'm not a right. prize fighter. I'm, I'm a, a surprise. surprise fighter. That's a hood street joke. That's a hood street joke, <laughs> yeah. but I loved it though. No, it was that's great. really funny. No, yeah. he's a great podcaster. That was great. His stand up sucks, but he's fucking Oh yeah, great terrible. Podcaster. But as it should. I mean, you just, you know. He's just, yeah. It takes time. Yeah, it's, it takes he time. doesn't understand and that's fine. And, yeah. and you know, but, but enjoy the lane you're in. Absolutely. If you're making money doing something you love, don't poo poo it. Right. Don't shit on it. Don't try to bring others down because you are not happy where your life ended up. That's yeah. where you, you know, I, I should be, I should be bitter. I always tell people, you know, I ain't got nothing. And but that's you know why I'm what, like though? this. You know what though? I like in the times, I don't know if you see it this way with mm. yourself, but in the times we're in and, and for how seasoned and great you are and even the character you are, the outside, like the person and the character, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's not a better time for you than no. right now. No, like like the world, I'm, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, which mm -hmm. you're doing it, you're doing it. And it takes the, the constant like, the consistency and the mm -hmm. consistency is it's hard because some mm -hmm. days you don't see nothing you know what i mean like it's yep. the days where you're like this don't feel like anything it's mm -hmm. the days you got to show up yep you know what i mean well those are the days i kill and those are the days i do really right. well i'm like right. oh i'm dreading this and i and i always do this that means it's going to be a good night yes, yes. if i'm dreading it it's going to be a good time yeah you're gonna so be a, i just that's why i fought force. through everything you're a force and then in the yeah. times of today I, I, you you're gonna be like the the, the go-to aunt people come to yep. and they're like, you know what I mean? Yep. To hear you talk your junk, yep. people are going to do that. I'm, I promise you. No, I know. I'm, yeah. I've always been ahead of my time. Yeah. I've yeah. always been way ahead of my yeah, time. Yeah, you're right on time. Yeah. I would say that. Well, I think time is I'd catching right up to time. me. Yeah, you're right on time. Yeah. You're right on time. Because had it happened earlier, 
with what I wasn't ready for it. I look back at my life and I go, I would have fucked it you, up. You wasn't ready, but also with the, the cause I talked to you, the mm-hmm. things you're gonna say and how it's gonna come, it comes off different. Mm-hmm. It's gonna come off different. Yeah. Cause then it would have been more like, oh, you know, you canceled, blah, blah. To, today's time for how you're crafting everything, when it comes out, it's gonna feel like, oh, yep. I've arrived. Yep. Not I'm fighting, but I'm telling you, I, I think you're right on time. Oh, I love I you. I you're I such a you sweet too. Pete. I love you to pieces. <laughs> and on that note, Tell everybody where they can find you on the socials and any shows out, you man. need to plug in the I'm next on, month. So uh, Sharif Johnson, y'all can find me on social media at R-I-E-F Comedy. That's R-I-E-F Comedy. I'm on everything at R-I-E-F Comedy, ChristianMingle.com, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I have a special coming out and an album. I'm making it a special and an album. Good. Yeah, so y'all can check that out. Uh, I'm filming that February 9th, but we, we sold out three shows already. That's amazing. So I want to say shout out. And this is the, one of the most underrated things I know because we're in the times of social media, but grassroots following, it's every... Dude, they are, they have your back. They have my back. I love, I have the best fans. They, I have the best let fans. Let me tell you, I, I, you know, I get... I remember when I couldn't sell a ticket, yo. Mm-hmm. And through the constant years and people, it's, it's great because it's not like, it's not family, but they're family now. Mm-hmm. You know, and what I yep. mean by that, they, not to say it's not that, but I wasn't born into that family. No. You know what I mean? The family that you choose is a family yeah. that take care of you. And sometimes they choose you, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. And, and, and they've helped me sell out Caroline's twice. And to, for these three shows to be sold out, I'm doing one in Jersey, uh-huh. which is the place I've been running a room at for five years. Right. So I built a lot of that following That's from beautiful. there. That's uh-huh. beautiful. And what's what's crazy about it is a lot of those people would talk to other people. Mm-hmm. They tell people from New York, yeah. you gotta see this guy, you gotta. Yeah. So because of that base, mm-hmm. I was able to sell out two shows in Jersey right. and, and two shows in New York. You know what I mean? And we're yep. doing it February 9th. We're going to February 8th and February 9th. Humble brag, but the tickets were sold. They sold out. Good for they you. Sold out. So, but I got to thank, I got to thank the people though. Thank yeah. y'all so much, man. Because, yeah, it's just wild. I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have thought that. I, um, I thought I was going to do like one one show uh-huh. or maybe two, one and a half. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what it would be, but I'm I just happy wanted I was to, able to do it. For my album, I just did one and done Yeah. because my show is so crazy. Right. So I just, I left it all on the table for an hour and a half and just left it there. That's and then beautiful. said, if I bomb, so be it. If so, I kill, so be it. So you know what I want to do too? Hmm. I'll, I'll drop this here for you. Mm-hmm. So I want to turn it into like a docu-series too. Good. So it's going to be an album and that part too, where it's like shows the hustle yep. of here's where it started, here where it had to build up. These are the steps it take. And people will also see the evolution of a joke yep. within the series. That's great. So I love it. So they get to see it grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you guys so. follow Sharif at Reef Comedy on all, all the social boy. medias. and. <laughs> He's amazing. You won't regret it. Thank and you. I Thank love you, you so me. much. I and and don't forget to follow the show here at Old Please. School, New School Comedy. Please. And you can follow me also at Christy Miller Comedy and all the socials. And uh, so do that. Like us, follow us, and share the show. <laughs> we love you. See Smash you next week. Like.